namely me uh, Mill Pril, uh, me Sabi location by uh, Yerabiri, uh, Berikaba. I will start by this flag, this you Aboriginal flag. I'll start by that, what it is, what, what the flag means. You can explain it in Okay. Want. The, the centre of the flag represents the sun, and the sun, so, and, and the red is the earth, that's the earth, and black is for the people, for the people. The earth is very sacred to our culture because we worship the earth is our mother, and so we are born from the earth, from the earth, and then when we die, we go back into the earth. But um, everything we see on the earth is alive. The trees are alive, the stones are alive, the water is alive. Everything has meaning, it's all complex. So, and we're all part of all the environment. Because, and the earth, our mother, protects us. So that's the basis of our identity. Then there's basic things of culture, sharing and caring for people, they're the basic rules of our culture. So we, um, we're a pacifist people, we, um, we were never warlike. And so when the first white man came up the river here and, and landed in this bay, in the 26th of January 1788, the Gadigal people sat in the, in the trees and thought they were ghosts. So the word in here comes Gaba, for white man. And so the people, when the, when the, when the Gadigal people saw the boats pull into the harbour, and they, they thought they were ghosts in the, in the, in the, in the form of man. So, so that begins, that's the understanding of, of how we view things. Everything is alive to us. I come from the Yuruburi language area, which is the city of Mackay in Queensland. Um, well, uh, it's, um, it's very famous it's, uh, in, the, in the world because the Great Barrier Reef is part of uh, comes down the coast from Papua New Guinea to right to 2,000 miles along the coast. It's the seventh one of the world. And so I come from a place um, in, um, in that part of the thing. I was brought up in the bush. I lived by the sea. Um, went hunting. Uh, bush tuckers. Um, medicines all came from the bush. And there was a law in Australia at the time um, where Aboriginal people weren't allowed to speak in their languages or you were jailed or a lot of those sort of things, you, it was restricted. So, but the basis of culture, my grandmother taught us, and one of the things that she highlighted that we, um, she wanted us to be educated into the white man system. So that's, that's um, how I came. I come to be in Sydney. So I've lived here a long time. I came here to be educated. Um, and at the time that I came here, uh, just at, in the 27th of May, 1976, is when there was a referendum of Australia because Aboriginal people didn't have any citizenship. We, had, uh, we didn't have any rights in Australia. So in the 27th of May, 27th of May 1967 is when we got our citizenship by a referendum in Australia. So that's not so long ago. That's not so long ago when that happened. Um, and so I came to be educated here and at that point of time uh, the Ministry of Aboriginal Affairs was created by the Prime Minister in Canberra. And so that became some fairly new, which began the point of Australia, virtually 
Australian uh, Aboriginal modern history began, then or contemporary history after those. So I was uh, very fortunate coming that time to be educated and, and I got swapped up into the process of uh, the politics. A lot of us who, who were just coming out of universities got swapped up in the process of politics. And so it became, so it became a, um, a struggle for me because I was brought up in a, all my education was about the Queen of England, about English history, from, from when I was young, all through my primary school days, all through high school, um, even in grade eight, I had to write an essay about the European common market. And I, I was only about 14 then, or 13, could it be 13 or 12 when I wrote that. We got a, um, um, got a hundred percent for that. And I did not know one day that what I see happening in Europe now that's a long time ago for me to be learning about something like that and then seeing it come to pass as I matured in, in Australia to see what's happening in Europe now. So I was very aware of that. And then I decided, so then a group of us decided, well, hold on, um, Australia has a black history too. So we became, a, became the uh, point of, um, of um, lobbying very high in politics in academia and in Australian history, that, that Australian history be inclusive of Aboriginal culture. Um, New South Wales is very forward in, in a sense to other states because we have Aboriginal studies that go on throughout the curriculum and um, from preschool to, to year 12 and then through universities in, in the civic areas of training, you know in specific areas of training. So, um, so in New South Wales, Aboriginal study is taught right across the school curriculum. No other state has it, I don't think, as much as you do in, in New South Wales. Really? Um, I've dedicated all my life to uh, education and to, 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 to Aboriginal children. Um, I always feel as I get older that I came from their backgrounds, but unlike them, I had to fight through the system by myself to get where I am today. And through the process of getting there, changed a whole lot of things as you witness today with the minister coming for the minister for arts for what we saw today, those sort of things. And so um, just recently, about a month ago, I'm revamped back into Aboriginal education and I still think it's by default but I always have this uh, cultural aspect about the earth my mother protecting me and I should listen, I should listen to the wind and listen to the trees and I never take things, uh, people see it in a superficial way, oh, to me it's much more uh, deeper than that. I'm on a journey and the, and the universe must be begging me to come again to do what I do. Um, I trust the ancestral spirits all the time in making a decision in my life. Even while I live in the city, if I go out at night and all of those sort of things and I see a huge argument or people around, I'm very careful. I listen to the, my instincts that this might be dangerous, don't go there. And, and you know you shouldn't be in this environment and go on to another environment. So, I, and I try and teach our children, or not only our children, but just uh, there's a lot of um, uh, I've a lot, a lot of white friends from all over the world who are close to me. So I talk to them they, about those sort of things too. They, over the years, some of my friends who come from Europe have known me 20 years, and they've they've observed me from afar, and they. They say to me that um, there's something about you because our children take to you now and those sort of things. So it's the whole process because I practice identity and things like that. I practice I'm a black person and I'm not a white person. I stand in politics and I say that. And I say it very boldly and very openly. I, I, we've got to be diplomatic in the way we interact between two cultures.
and those sort of things. One is the dominant culture. The white culture is dominant. How do we fit in to keep our identity? And I, I suppose today what you heard at the launch in front of the minister is an example of those sort of things. How does one keep the identity and, and um, be, uh, be part of a broader society? How do we mix like that kid? In, in, in the process of all of this, that respect is being given to the Aboriginal people again, by people in particular, not by politics. The politics, we all, the politics are there, we say, one party comes in, one party leaves, one comes in, but we can't change, we're going to keep focus. Where whichever party comes, we've got to learn to negotiate. As you saw this morning, with, uh, with us going to the protests, what happened this morning, the parliament changed itself with a new leader. And then this is the federal minister that come, that's the man. And we had a debate about it, and then we went, and then it went off really well. And I said to everybody, that our ancestral spirits are with us today, because everything went smooth. We heard music, you were with us and it all went smooth. And so keep that in our hearts and minds and things will go smooth because we are the earth people of this land. Regardless of, of the city out there and all the buildings, regardless of all of that, we still have to pay homage to the earth, our mother, you know, those sort of things. I'm a cultural mentor, I'm a cultural um, advisor. I've been to the highest of politics in the country, from the Prime Minister's office through government offices. I've been sent overseas to represent Australia for my cultural identity to other countries across the Pacific, to uh, participate in forums and those sort of things. Um, I, I was appointed there by the Minister because uh, he wanted uh, the museum as his modern Australian art and objects and he wanted me to come to the museum and do interpretations in Aboriginal modern history and not in traditional history. And so I um, collected things, of a lot of things, from, from all the fine arts, from, from fashion, from newspapers, all of those sort of things. So to bring, because uh, the Aboriginal culture doesn't, uh, is not stagnant, it doesn't die. We're involved in what we call the dreaming, the, the evolution of going forward. All the people in, the, on the, in Australia at the moment are with, on the dreaming with us. They're here for that reason. Wherever they come from in the world, in our philosophy, they're on the dreaming with us to move forward wherever it goes. We have to adapt to the environmental changes. We have to adapt. We're living in a white society, so we've got to adapt to keep our identity and adapt to another way of learning. And in, a, in, in education, we call it two-way learning. The white people got to learn our ways and we've got to learn their ways. So, so there's a point of education we call it two-way learning but they got to learn and we got to share so Australia has a reconciliation policy where white Australians run things in communities about Aboriginal people and they themselves educate their own communities about Aboriginal culture so all of that goes on in Australia It's very complex, but it happens in New South Wales. And my job, um, I've travelled all over the state to regions in my time, um, right across the states and the towns, and um, I'm, a, I'm used as an advisor. I understand the system of government. I understand because I worked in the minister's office. I was trained at high levels of the public service. So all, so the, a lot of people that can lose your identity, you see. I was always aware a lot of money can lose your identity. So I reversed the process of that to, to be as normal as I can in my identity, comfortably.
in what I do. My things I'm appreciative for. It. I I shouldn't say that either, but I have that feeling that I'm appreciative for. It. I try not to be stereotypical. Um, my whole family's like that. We weren't brought up to drink alcohol. We weren't brought up to gamble. All of those sort of things. I I have six brothers, so we weren't brought up like that. The whole clan, and so we're very level-headed, so that people don't. We keep culture, but we're not stereotypical. I'm um, a bit scared about globalisation and the free trade agreement because we're only 2% of the population and I, and I see it in young people today, see it in young people today where they, where they, um, where they, um, It's it's a it's a point of of uh, of the, the World Bank, for instance, controls a whole lot of things. So I get it's in Australia. I see young people, lots of people come here. Say, for instance, uh, coming here from re refugee status, you know, asylum seekers, and they come here. I'll just give you an example of a boy I just met with, and it really worries me. They come to Australia and then they get caught up because alcohol is free. They can drink alcohol, nobody stops them. They might come from a Muslim country. And then, then when I look, they become alcoholics. Or drugs is another thing, because we have a free society. It's a free society. So I, get, I see this in Australian society. I see them taking on the Australian persona. I'd so see them taking on the Australian persona of this relaxation and not realise we have a great problem in Australia over over drugs and alcohol. And I'm seeing this now. I'm seeing people coming as refugees living out of bins and those sort of things. So and I understand that this is a worldwide thing. This just doesn't happen here. It happens all around the world. So I have a great feel of multinationals and globalisation and those sort of things. Of course the world's not getting any better. It's, they think they are, but we've got a war in Iraq, in Iran. Australia's never seen the, 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 the distortion that's happened since you've been here in one week must be amazing for you, to, to, uh, to the federal government change. Those sort of things. Where do we fit into it? Do we become tribal? Tribalism, it says, do we keep to our own little community, like I keep the glue, grow our gardens, use up all the space to grow gardens in case we don't have food one day. You know, those sort of things I worry about. One day, I, I always, in my dreams, I see a whole tsunami coming up here. It's constantly in my dreams. And we live on a tectonic plate on between New Zealand and Australia, we're volcanoes, and, and there's always warnings given to Australia that one day we'll have a, a huge tsunami along the east coast of Australia. Because that, uh, most of Australian population live on the eastern seaboard of Australia, live all around the thing. They don't live in land, they live all along the coast, and, and those sort of things. We can see global warming, uh, whether the skeptics that think that. We all understand that there's, there's, there's so much uh, natural resources in Australia. But uranium is all on Aboriginal traditional land. That's where all the uranium mines are, where the tr Aboriginal traditional lands are, and, the, and those sort of things. And then people are manipulating the people, well, they get big money, I suppose, from multinationals. I get particularly worried where our children in the future will fit in this. I don't think our society will be like me or James, the people you're meeting today. I think it'll be very different. And I think that our kids will be very different. I think they'll be nearly acting like white Australians and that will be a, that, that stepping, going up and then meeting their, their, their other nationalities around the world being their friends and those sort of things. And I think one day that in the future that uh, perhaps it will be a peaceful society, hopefully for me it will be a peaceful society.
society. But when I, young people, the evolution of, of culture is going forward. It has to become modern. It can't be stagnant. Because we live in such an affluence. Um, and how, how do kids are losing it? There's more kids today. I see a generation of kids that don't, um, can't read and write. Our generation could. Most of our generation could read and write. The next generation can't read and write. Those worry me. That's, that sort of thing worry me. Or not worry, I have a concern about it. Or while I'm here on this earth, how do I, how do I contribute and participate to those young people? And the only way I can do it is always be seen like I am today. And a lot of young people come up and know who I am and, and, and they explain to their bosses and those sort of things. If I keep that momentum up and keep my, my status, my identity, and be, be seen amongst them so that they, and oh, he's here today, and they'll feel comfortable about it, those sort of things. Really? In Australia and Canada and New Zealand, Canada, for instance, has their own indigenous television network. And they've always had that. They're very progressive in Canada. So then in New Zealand, they also have their own indigenous television network. It's just beginning to happen in Australia. We were very worried about television and the commercials and multinationals felt that we should not, every people should not, so there was a huge argument. The government had to give way, so we're part of the OSAT in the, the OSAT uh, satellite system in the sky, so indigenous television goes on for that. Um, what they're trying to do with indigenous television, and, and they can't because the Australian government has clear lines where commercial television go. It is a worry because sometimes when you go to a community and you have to have a meeting and their favourite uh, episode of a serial comes on, you can't have the meeting till that's over. And so you can sit for a whole day while people watch television and you can't have the meeting. So you have to fly there and virtually sit and wait till the episode's over and then people come to it. Um, I'm, there's this, there's this whole, whole thing in, in Aboriginal society, particularly in the central desert, because you have a lot of uh, white Australians who go there and, and manage, and they want people, they import those things in, or people bring them into a community. So you have all of that going on. You have that going on in the community, and, and we don't have any right to stop it, but, but we're trying to utilise it in a better way that they see stories of, if it's not this culture here, some culture around the world, on those television stations. It's a worry because um, the, when, when Australia, when, the, when Australia was in the constitution, it created what they called the white Australian policy. And in that policy, they had to breed out every black person, a person of colour, out and to become white. So we lived through that till a long, long, long time, that policy. And, and what happened, they, Captain Cook in his diaries wrote that these were animals. He wrote when he saw us about animals. So the concept of that in his diaries went with the colonisers that came and round us and had no idea that we had a whole kinship plan and a democratic way of life before them that was very unique. Now they understand, anthropologists and that understand those things. So then what would, it's gonna take another generation, one generation have to, to die out. What worries me in the central desert is that there's a lot of money spent there, but they never use it. A lot of people were learning, or this new government is learning, it wasn't utilized properly. And so the, this new government, for the first time in Australian society, is going trying to take over and make um, right across the country how, pe how to utilise its resources better for, for the central desert people. I was really astounded when I went there and seen that. And uh, in the middle of the desert, a television, and everybody sat around it.
and it just it really amazed me those sort of things but the, it's 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 replacing those cultural protocols so you have governments that change and they say why can't these aboriginal people live like us and have television who are you 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 aboriginal people in the city are just a mob of whingers and you stood it and so you got so there's always a, a split in in the society between Aboriginal leaders who feel that the community should have that, and the, and and those people out there, to us who live along, the, we are we're called urbanised Aboriginals or reg, regional Aboriginal. We're brought up in a society where we've integrated very well, and trying to keep our identity, as and the people in the traditional people who have it all, are, are, you could you would have seen it. It's destroying them. We did have a policy called the self-determination policy and the previous government um, uh, destroyed it. The, the, the previous government to this one it, it was in, it destroyed the self-determination policy and took it away. And we had it for years and years. Our organisations um, got incorporated outside of the government and so there are those unique Aboriginal organisations who, who defied the government and, and caused it. They're the success today, success models of self-determination. The organisation I belong to, the Aboriginal Education Consultative Group, is one example of that. And now today we've never had any Aboriginal teachers in the whole system in New South Wales. Today we have about 3,000 Aboriginal professional workers in the whole education system. So that's just give you an example of of sex. And we drive very high in education for cultural protocols, why I talked about language. And language is taught for in kindergarten now. Linguists are going back and driving culture back to the kids from kindergarten. We realise that you've got to have a stopping point and a starting point. So there's going to be a whole generation that will miss out. And already in the system, the younger people from kindergarten and babies are learning learning culture again and and being in a being in a in a in a affluent society as we are to allow them to have pride of place of their identity and all of that and then you will understand in Australian society that the values of Africa American um, uh, culture and fashion and hairdos are part of our society now that's becoming our society, take on, a, uh, uh, take on this whole new image. And so there's a lot of African Americans here and has particular skills and, um, and in the country come in and see Aboriginal people and integrate and bring some amazing skills to teach our people. So that's, a, that's, a, that's another bonus. A lot, of, a lot of people from out of the country, like you for instance, and I've, over 20 years of my life, 27 years of my life, I've been, um, um, I've been a person who has to mentor um, students from all over Europe. I've had students from all over Europe in 27 years and come and, uh, and tutor them. They study Aboriginal studies. They come in the country on uh, practice. And so uh, I've been doing that for a long time. And some of those students now are growing up and adult people, they still contact me today in wherever they live in the other side of the world, in their community, have learned concepts. They go on the email to ask me a question, how do they deal with the problem in the country they are? So then, because of the experience they had here with me. So I give them advice like that, those sort of things still go on today. There's a student who in, in Holland, I've known him since 10 years, and he just realised I came back into Aboriginal education this week and he's requested he wants to come here to teach in one of the schools. And they sort of, so that goes on. So I've always noticed that outside the country, people want to know more about us than the Australians that live in the country. I think, I think we'll go back to television again. Today we have very strategically planned right out of the country, we have our own television and radio networks. It most probably is only three years old. If we have control over that, 
we've been able to keep our identity through the media. We've learned to utilise our websites that what we don't see in mainstream media anymore, it comes on Indigenous websites, on white websites, and so that we're able to communicate about problems, we're able to support a person in Central Desert, the lady in particular who you talked about, Shaw, she comes here, we're able to set up meetings and forums so she can speak here and those sort of things. We're able to utilise the Australian media while she's here in, in Sydney to talk about the problems in Alice Springs. So, so those sort of networks. It's, we, we have a policy in Australia called, the government has a policy called tolerance, that each person's got to be tolerant of religion, of culture, of identity. And how does this fit into being an Australian? So Australians are a multicultural society. So they are white, you are Australian. But hold on, no you're not, you're not white. I'm, I'm Aboriginal, I'm not Australian. But how do, we, how do we melt this down to keep our own identity? If you came here as Spanish, you have to keep your identity in this society and be, still be Australian. I, do, I will never feel Australian. I don't fit in with the Australian National Anthem. I don't, I make a point that I won't stand for the Australian National Anthem. I sing it, or I'm very careful and diplomatic if I'm with children. There are a lot of us who don't like our children to stand at school assemblies with the Australian Anthem, so that, that those sort of things are, people, uh, school, some schools and regions um, understand that and so they don't play the Australian anthem. I don't ever carry the Australian flag because it has the British Union Jack on it. I'm not part the Queen of, uh, the Queen Elizabeth is, the, is uh, in a Prime Minister's time became Queen of Australia, those sort of things. Um, I think the Queen would like to like Australia to become a public because as you watch the royal family and, and let me just say the royal family has come here lots of times and are very aware of Aboriginal culture and Aboriginal people's fight and all that. Uh, even back in Prince Charles and Lady Di's made a request once when they came to Sydney. They didn't want the media, they want to meet exclusively the Aboriginal people. So that all happened for them. No protocols and they came in the community. And I think that they have an understanding of that too. But it's just that, that we have in Australia the monarchists who want the royals to stay. There's a lot of value in, the, in, the, in, the, in having the English system of uh, law in, in Australia because uh, we wouldn't have land rights and all of that if it wasn't if, the, if our people who fought for those things in the High Court of Australia ruled in 1992, the Mabo case, it was fought under a thousand year common law system of English legal system. And that's how the case was won because we're part of that system in England. If we become a republic, the Aboriginal people have asked that they be first part of the constitution as the first people in the constitution. That is causing a lot of worry about white Australians because they're blocked in this thing that we're going to take over their buildings and their houses and all of that. And, and that's going to go on for a long, long time. And as I said, one gen a whole generation will, will die out when a new generation will come into place and make it a republic. It'll, it's Um, they should have what we call an Aboriginal provisional government with separate money, a block of money, that we have full control over it. It can happen in the system. If a treaty can't happen between that, have an Aboriginal, uh, have Aboriginal provisional government that, we have, that a bucket of money is put there and we can control. Give us the land we want, give us all of those things let us interact between pastoralists and town councils at each local level so that, that if we can interact in towns 
and that between the, the community we live in and use the money in a, in a sense to enterprise and, and, and do things. Because at the moment, the way the system works, it goes into the bureaucracy. Half the money in Aboriginal affairs is taken up in white bureaucracy and very little trickles to the people. So you have all these people running around up there with, with money, making decisions on our life. And a lot of them, why I won the case the other day, because they just took me as this. Never thought about, that's an intelligent man. I had to prove it. I've always, I'm getting too old to keep proving myself to young people. These people are only 21 years old. And why would I want them to have a control over my life when I've done all of that? I've, been, I've got high citation from the Queen of England or the Queen of Australia. I've won really high prestigious awards in Australia. So why would I, a white boy comes down the street and then he takes me to court and I win the court case over. And I've done that lots of times, lots of times, six times in my life. I've, I've been taken to court by people and I've won the court because they forgot to ask me. And it took somebody to sit up there at that high level to recognise, this man is very important. And um, I'm a political activist, by the way. And I, I, I take up causes, I don't care who they are, on, this, on here. I campaign for this, for the water to be clean. All of that, I go to council meetings. It's very important water, so I, 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 don't, I don't shy away from things. And it's amazing, I've never been arrested in the country. It's re that's really amazing. But I've learned to, what I've learned to keep my identity was to learn how, have people, why, have people mentor me, my friends mentor me, go to, to excellence, to work in the public service, work at high levels and give my, keep my respect and now I'm respected for that so I'm able to, you know, even here the police still, where I live, the police still chase me in the car. That car, they think I stole the car. And they're young people, they're young white people who pull me up. If it's an average person, they would, like today when I walk, how are you? And give you that respect, they know who you are, come on. And it doesn't happen, the police, police, I've had to stop the police here. That if you, I've had to go right to the top of the police to stop them from doing that. And they, now they see the number plate and they stop and, and, and stop themselves. Really? There's two kinds of racism you've got to look at. You have to look at institutional racism. When, when Australia's constitution was formed, it had a white Australian policy to commit genocide on anybody who was of colour in the country. So that's, that still is, that, that intelligence from 1901 today is even worse today than when it was created. And then you have the racism that I talk about, that people judge you by this, instead of asking and creating this havoc. I'm really aware of it, that, that I'm really aware when a policeman turns up, if I don't be assertive and confront them straight away or show off or run, they will start to chase me. So I never run from them, I confront them, I articulate myself because then if they get a bit stroppy, and if I wasn't the way I am, they would arrest me. A lot of our people, the jails here in Australia are just full of our people, and it's over the most minimum things. Now, we have Aboriginal judges in the country, and they've thrown out court cases. There's a court case where 22 Aboriginals in a town called Lismore were, um, were, uh, all went to court for swearing at the police and for being drunken and disorderly in a country town. And the Aboriginal judge who was there kicked, uh, dismissed all oh, the whole cases. And the only white person that came along, he was fined on one day. That's a, and she based her argument. She's very controversial in the country. Her name's Pat O'Shane, and she's very controversial as a judge, the way she makes judgment. But she doesn't only judge for Aboriginal people. She judges also on women's issue in high society. Where, uh, where, high, where the men's, and she's gave good judgments, 
in women's rights and children's rights that's never happened in the system and she comes very controversial in in the spin doctors on radio or in Australian uh, media da 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 she's still there she's still there she still she still she understands her identity as an Aboriginal she understands that and she understands that she don't fit into that that part of society where you got to tow the line so she steps out of it we call sitting on the edge of the, of the cliff and so that happened but I'm I've always one of my things in life from ver from very young to today I cannot believe that I still have to combat racism and one of the worst offenders today in the city are Indians Indians that come to the country the reason why I say that we Aboriginal people will never get a taxi in this anywhere where the Indian drivers. They pull up or they drive off. So, so I refuse to get in cars with the Indians. I just refuse to. I wait for Chinese. I wait for white Australians. Are good, they pull up. But no, I, I, you will find in the, in, the, in, in in Aboriginal society, most people don't like Indians. And they come here and they're beginning to uh, infiltrate that they pose as Aboriginal people. They look like Aboriginal people. And so, and in, in our way of thinking, we know who's Aboriginal. We know by names, we know by language, and all of those sort of things. And that they've been discovered, a lot of that happening here. We're Indians because of Aboriginal, um, we have separate funding for Aboriginal, separate boxes and all of that and so you've got to be very careful of that. I've confronted a lot of um, departments on that where, the, where Indians are given preferences being Aboriginal. But racism is right here, let me just say it is. And that's why the policy of tolerance, we've got to use, learn to how to, to um, the policy of tolerance, how do we tolerate these people. There are ways to get around it now and all of those sort of things. And um, I've been to court so many times in Australian law courts over racism. Nearly every, every, every time I'm going to court, it's over that. And I've proved it right. Just, and last week was an example, last Thursday, when, when I was taken to court and I won the court case. Because I've learned to document. I've learned to use cameras. I've learned to keep pieces of paper. I've learned to write diaries. And the, and the people who would take me, young people, had no idea until I went to court and it was all presented between the court, the evidence. And they were just like, and I, felt, I, I never feel like I've won. I always feel it challenges me and I always feel sorry for them and say, but all you had to do was ask me. And you kept this barrier up and you kept telling these pretenses, and then at the last minute, I know the game now, and at the last minute. Alturinga is a complexity of, um, of, of where we started from and where we're going to end. And it's called um, dream, dream, the dreaming tracks, or the dreaming, and so that it all, uh, our culture through Alturinga evolves with time and it involves with the environment and how we adapt with the environment. So since um, European came to this country, they're part of the cycle of the dreaming, the evolving in time. So we as Aboriginal people, for our survival, have to adapt to the change of this dominant culture and um, so we adapt to the environment. We, we become modern too, we, all those sort of things that modern people have, we, ad we evolve with it in the dreaming. So in our culture we believe that um, the world goes in 5,000 year cycles and that we're at the the t end of that time and how we know it at the end of the time because um, the land's been raped and pillaged 
Uh, we have mining companies, they have houses. All the purity of culture is gone, so we're at the end of this time circle of 5,000 years. Earth, we go in 5,000 year cycles. Um, anthropology has discovered that Aboriginal people have lived here for 60,000 years, which means the earth is old, and so it fits in the concept of the 5,000 years. So we're at the end of the cycle. How are we now at the end of the cycle? Because the whole earth is being raped and pillaged. Uh, the environment is poisoned. We know that in Australia there's no water now. Um, uh, people took it for granted once that we had huge, uh, huge amount of water here and um, that doesn't happen anymore because we understand now that the, the continent's dry enough. So, so the cycle has the end because all the sacredness of what we know about sacredness of the land is gone. Those things are gone. Um, how this will happen? It could be anything, a natural disaster. It could be atomic energy, a nuclear reaction. I see a very positive shift in that way. I don't know if Australia is going to understand the future. Our kids are becoming um, professionals in all sorts of um, sport, in science, in medicine, all of those, all the sort of things that uh, the dominant culture has brought here. Our children today are, um, are being part of those things of being the future. So I don't know, I don't think that Australia will be prepared for our children in the future, that they would adapt. Um, one of the things I kind of like is, um, is that the, in the White Australia policy, we're, uh, we were, um, restrictions were put on us from, from, um, Practicing cultural protocol, practicing languages, uh, all those sort of things of Aboriginal society was stopped. And so in the, at the end of the 21st century, a whole resurgence came that our history has to be part of a white history in Australia. And so in terms of that, in the last, um, last three years, um, Aboriginal languages again through linguistics is being spoken. Children are starting to learn them from very early ages. So if this increases, um, uh, there'll be a whole different sort of politics that Australia will have to come. I don't think they're prepared for it, but I think the word tolerance that's in Australian society most probably will help everybody to survive. Uh, we're only three percent of the population, but we, but we have a lot to say. Out of three percent of the population, we have a lot to say, and we're becoming. Um, our art is Australia learned, earns uh, the economy in Australia earns a lot from Aboriginal art, for the billions of dollars, something in the vicinity of thirteen billion dollars a year on Aboriginal art alone. We're 3% of the, of the population. Uh, we, um, tourism, um, being, faces being seen in sports. A lot of our sporting heroes in Australia are Aboriginal now. So those sort of things and people are very, uh, have come to terms and, and support, support those sort of things. Which gives, uh, there's a famous Australian here, We are in a democracy and we should be pleased we tell ourselves we've come to that self-realisation. But um, the politics that's playing throughout the whole world doesn't... It is a question I ask myself in the last two days. Am I living in a democracy? Or, am I, or is, the, is the government wanting us to have control over us? like a socialist state, or um, the intervention in the Northern Territory doesn't give us that right. 
as a democracy. Taking away the anti-discrimination laws by the last government doesn't make us a democracy. It makes us a fascist state, Australia a fascist state. And that hasn't been changed in the new socialist government either. And it's continuing. Um, and one of the things that can never happen in Australia, Aboriginal people will walk away from these sort of things or will create um, a disharmony and they have every right to because there's no control on them by, by the government. There's no control. The more you squeeze down, the sides are going to squeeze out and that becomes something. Um, my philosophy on life is, today is to think about oneself, how you connect from, from mind, body, soul to the earth, and, and uh, to always be obje take an objective point of view and really think before you begin to, to speak about, about an issue. Listen very carefully to what the other person is saying. Um, and then think locally and not globally, because I don't, if we think globally, and all sorts of things can happen. So people in Australia, how I live today, are thinking very locally, thinking about our neighbours, where we live, and all of those sort of things. And, and I wouldn't like to build any further than that, because it's a very dangerous time we're living in. Um, and that's, in the, in, that's because of humanity itself. Um, there's too many wars, it's too, they're not necessary. Um, politicians are not listening anymore. And what happened in, uh, with George Bush creating the, the havoc, and the newspapers play a great part in it, the, the world media has a great part in, um, they play a great part in, uh, in a democracy. They have that freedom and uh, lots of time it's sensationalism. They sensationalise stories, people take it up for a cause. Uh, in Australia we're learning that people are, uh, people are paying huge big money to politicians. We're learning that in America. Big, uh, big um, multinationals paying money to politicians for votes. And, uh, but the, and I, I was just, this week alone in Australia, two things happened in politics and very unpredictable of the Australian media. They predicted all these things and nothing the Australian media predicts about politics in Australia always goes the reverse. So, so never watch them. I like the idea of internet in a way because I can, um, can communicate outside of my house to other people in the world. I can seek information to somebody around the world by the use of, um, of uh, technology, internet technology these days and get a better answer than reading it in the newspaper. One day there won't be any more newspapers we believe in Australia because uh, um, the newspapers are going down and people are using the internet in, in a much uh, uh, in a much useful way for information. Then, because I think people around the world, especially you coming and going to all the countries you have, that you must have thought about it from your point of view to see me on this part of the earth. And so we have a common thread on that our interest, what you came for. And I'm sure that from my perspective, you, you're much fortunate than I am. Because you've, co you've co covered in three, all the countries you've been to, and so young as well, to, to, um, to have that. So there's a common thread amongst people in the world. And I come to understand that, and and it's much more appreciated, very much appreciated than than what what the World Bank can tell us. <laughs> <laughs>